Father Vimal, uh, last Saturday you were present at the Vatican at the inauguration of the Synod of Bishops. Yeah. What are your impressions? Oh yes. Um, in fact, I went there, as you know, as a member of the Theological Commission appointed by the Secretariat for the Synod. Uh, I'm one of the Theological Commission members. And you are asking my impression. And the impressions were very, very impressive. In the sense, you see, on Saturday, it was not only I who participated, our Father General, Superior General Father Michael Braille was there as one of the members of the Superior General uh, Council. He is also the Vice President, I think. And our President of the Alfonsiano, uh, Professor Alfonso Amarante. So, you are asking my impression. Well, there were, first of all, the whole aula of Paul VI was full. Not only with cardinals and bishops and priests and theologians, but with so many lay people. So many lay people. In other words, what are we saying here? The whole people of God, the church, Vatican Council said, church is people of God. That is, not only the hierarchy, all the baptized, and they were there. Now, you are asking, Father Gregor, my impressions. First of all, the entire uh, aula or the hall was electrified when Pope Francis entered. He entered, as usual, very simply, and his discourse was excellent. The impression you are asking, I am going back to your question again. The impression is this. You see, Father, we have, we in the church, still continue as a hierarchical church. We continue as Pope on top, College of Cardinals, College of Bishops, Priests, Deacons, lay people. Second Vatican Council in Lumen Gentium, all of us have done seminary studies, no? Lumen Gentium. First put people of God, all the baptized, then the hierarchy. We have forgotten that during the past 60 years or so. We have only looked at the document but never practiced it. So this synod is a return to that. And Pope was insisting, as usual, the importance of listening to all the people of God, all the baptized people. You, my confreres, might ask, why? Why should we listen to all the people of God? Isn't it enough to listen to bishops, our pastors? Definitely, they are the magisterium, no doubt about it. But let's not forget, the tradition, our Catholic tradition has always said, and Lumen Gentium in Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium number 11 and 12 said clearly that all the baptized are the vehicle through which Holy Spirit speaks. Of course, please don't misunderstand me, of course, through the hierarchy, through the bishops, through the magisterium, the Holy Spirit speaks in a special way. But they should listen to the people of God. It's together. That's why uh, the theme of this uh, synod is for a synodal church, communion, participation and mission. Communion, participation and mission. Accordingly, the importance is to listen to people. And Pope said clearly, to the bishops, he was quite harsh. He said, Dear bishop, brother bishops, don't try to tell during this process, which will last for two years, don't try to tell, Oh, we have done it always this way. We don't need any new way. Oh, I don't have time. All of us should find time for this. To listen to the Holy Spirit by listening to one another. Last point I want to say to that question is impression. During the past five days after the inauguration, uh, the Mass at St. Peter's Basilica the following day, very solemn Mass, and the remaining three days, we have been discussing not only the Theological Commission, other commissions also for the Synod, and we lived the Synodal journey. I want to make a little point here. It was very hard. I am very uh, how to put it, experience now, attending meetings, theological meetings, conferences. But this was the hardest for me. Because sometimes there were opinions that, were, that I could not agree. 
Sometimes there were some opinions which were, excuse me my language, which were stupid. Even theologians say crazy things. But that is synodal journey. That is the journey of synod. Namely, to accompany, to accommodate all, inclusive. So we had to listen carefully, even through this idiotic expression by someone, what is the Holy Spirit saying? We can't say only the learned theologians should be heard, only the bishop should be heard, no. Even the last of the lay person, as Lumen Gentium number 12 says, and as uh, uh, Conga would say, from the bishop to the last person, we must listen because the Holy Spirit speaks through them. So, I think I answered my uh, your question with my impressions, but only one line, <laughs> namely, this synod will last for two years. N Next, yeah, today is Thursday or Friday, today is Thursday, this weekend they start the diocesan level. But the universal level, what we call universal level, was started four days ago. Now, diocesan level. In this, local churches, that is, parishes, dioceses, bishops' conferences, and we are redemptorists, no? Also redemptorist congregation. Our communities, our superiors will have to join this synodal journey. Synod means, Pope is very fond of saying that, walking together walking together we have to walk together that's the impression i have thank you uh, father Rubimal, uh, you are the member of the theological commission for the synod yeah can you please give some comments on them yes uh the beauty father gregory is this theological commission consists of people different of different theological disciplines canon law moral theology probably moral theology only I am there, but uh, systematic theology, all. Also, not only religious and priest theologians, there are so many lay theologians in this theological commission. Beauty, the beauty is that we are 25 members altogether, and uh, as you know, I'm from Sri Lanka, Redemptorist, of course. Uh, from Asia, there are only three. Professor Thomas Kolamparambil from India, and uh, Professor Professoressa Stella Padilla from the Philippines, and I am the third one. So these 25 members are expected to help during this process from this month till 2022 October, uh, sorry, 2023 October, till then, uh, we are supposed to accompany lay people because people have a lot of questions. You know, one of the main things that we had to draft was, we drafted it from last June, I was appointed last June, these two documents. This is called the preparatory document. This is the preparatory document which all the bishops, parish priests, all of them will get. This is in English. And then the Theological Commission also prepared the Vademekum. That is a handbook, how to go about this. So, these things we have done already, but I think I already answered your question, Father Gregor, earlier, but I want to add something. Namely, I said it was a synodal experience during the past three, four days. Theological Commission was meeting and very hard because suddenly one will say this, another one will say something, and Cardinal Mario Gray, who is the uh, president of the Secretariat, was very gracious in saying, don't worry, there will be disagreements, but we are on a synodal journey. We have to listen to everybody. So you asked me about the, uh, you almost asked about the role of theological commission. It is to help the people of God. Church is people of God. Church is not the bishops. Church is not the priests. Church is not the redemptorist. Church is all of us baptized. So we are called, the theological commission, to assist, echo la parola. That's the word. To assist the people of God in their journey. In their journey towards what? Towards communion, participation. Why? For the mission. I see here, if you don't mind, a great similarity with our congregation. I think I'll talk about it later. Because everything is done for the mission. Not just because 
Uh, I think here I must say this, uh, Father Gregory, excuse me. You didn't ask that, but suddenly it came to my mind. Many people say today, Oh, this is a pet idea of Pope Francis. Pope Francis is going crazy. He is bringing his Latin American theology here. Not at all. If you read these, first read these and then let's talk. They are all based on, not Francis, based mostly on Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, Gaudium et Spes, Ad Gentes. This is what the church wanted. So Pope Francis is reviving the ecclesiology of the church that was forgotten. Forgotten, unfortunately. And I must say, Pope John Paul II, some of his teachings are there. But this present pontificate is concentrating based on Vatican Council, John Paul II and so many others and want to renew the church. Because this morning when I was in our refectory, one of my confreres asked the question which Father Gregor asked just now. And his question was, do you think anything new would come? Well, I don't know, but I think the Holy Spirit has his ways. The beauty is, I think it's John chapter 3, verses, verse 8, which says, the Spirit blows where it wills. We don't know where we will be. There are so many uncertain things, complications, complex things, disappointments, but that is the way the Holy Spirit leads the church and the congregation. So I just want to say it is a return to the Vatican II ecclesiology of Lumen Gentium. So we in the Theological Commission are trying to give a hand to the Secretariat for the Synods. Father Wilmalp, you mentioned the Redemptorist congregation, our congregation. Yeah. As we know, we are just started our preparation process for the 26th general chapter. Sure. Do you see any relevance in this process with the synodal process uh, just parallelly, no. we, we can say, parallelly started? Uh, very, very good, uh, uh, Father Gregor. I think that should be the question for us Redemptorists. I mean, all are not theologians, but for our CSSR life, how will it affect? What's the relevance? I think your question, thank you for asking that. It has great relevance and you used a very good word, parallel. There is a close parallel. Now see, I hope I was clear in my explanation. It is a question of decision taking and decision making in the universal church, not only by the hierarchy or by the Pope. Consulting all the people and the last decision they have to make. Everybody cannot make decisions. Huh? Let's accept that. But they have to be listened to. So when you ask Father Gregory, when you ask me, is there a parallel? Definitely. Definitely there is a parallel. Because in our congregation, we have initiated this process of renewal, restructuring and now reconfiguration. I'm a little confused about these words. Huh? I must admit, although I'm into theology, but renewal, let's say. We have a renewal, okay? I see, in fact, Father General, Father Michael Braille, both of us were having a long chat just before the papal mass last Sunday. I casually asked him, I think that we should introduce this. He said, no, what do you mean introduce? We have already. But we have to intensify it. Namely, uh, to consult, to get the opinions, to make participate all the conferences. I'm sorry, I myself have been a major superior in Sri Lanka. I myself have been a superior of many communities. But very often in our congregation, even today, even today, I was a superior 20 years ago, but even today, even some young redemptorists we still follow the monarchical model. Let's say, Father Gregor, I'll take only your name huh, because you are my interviewer. Let's say you are the superior. I'm only taking an example. This is not true, just to show, huh, illustrate. He's the superior of uh, a community here. Let's say community of Rome. We are Merulana. If he takes all the decisions on his own and with his counsel, no matter what the members of our community here say, 
How will that be? I'm just taking a very simple example. That happens very often. Consultation is very at a very minimum in many congregations, including ours today. Someone becomes a superior, he thinks he is even more important than the Pope. That cannot be. All of us are conferees. And in a congregation, Father Gregor, you were saying, there is a, isn't there a parallel? There is certainly a parallel. More than a parallel. I would say, I would develop your question if you don't mind. We Redemptorists and our other fellow religious Jesuits, Salatians, sisters, we should give the lead to the church, not the church giving, the rest of the church. Not they should give us the lead, we should be prophetic. We should show the church, this is the way to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit, speaking through each confrere. Thus, in the universal church, the voice of the Holy Spirit, what is it saying? Oh, that's a little uncomfortable for me. Okay, we have to listen. And the Pope is insisting nobody should be excluded. Everybody should be included. It's not a question of compromising. It's a question of participating, listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. So, I will finish here by saying, I think I was a little vague in answering your question, there is a parallel. There is great relevance for our forthcoming general chapter. In fact, Vatican wants each congregation to introduce it into their uh, way of life. But I think we have the chapter next year, isn't it? 22 or 23? 22. 22. 22. We will be having the chapter before the Synod. Synod is in 23. I think if we can give a lead, if we can show, yes, what you all are talking about, we are doing. If we can do that, namely, to be in communion with each other. We are a big, big religious congregation. I think seventh men's clerical congregation in the world. Whether we could be in communion, then the second word, whether all of us participate. Father Gregor in communication. Someone else in the Alphonsianum. Someone else in the mission band. Someone else in some other thing. Someone else in authority. We are a communion for a mission. Last one is for a mission. So let's hope and pray that this synodal journey, which is participation, all should be given opportunity to participate. Otherwise, St. Alphonsus would be very sad because though he was a son of his time, during his time, it was more monarchical, more hierarchical. But still he had a lot of consultation, no doubt. But we, the sons of the Second Vatican Council, far ahead of Alphonsus, we need to consult. We need to listen. We need to listen not just to Gregor, not just to this one, not just to Gianni, not just to this one, that one. To everyone. Why? Holy Spirit makes no distinction. He uses anybody, especially the baptized, to give his opinion. Let's pray that during this synod, synod will enrich the congregation. Let's pray also the congregation will enrich the synod. And that will be our prayer. Thank you.